You don't really know much about Halloween. And welcome to another unboxing video here, which we have a slew of them, uh, which if you've not noticed by now, there's been a lot that have been posting into the stream. Uh, this one may be the first, it may be the last. I don't know the order I'm going to put them out yet, but uh, just letting you know there's a lot to see. So if you like unboxing videos, you like to see what's out there, kind of the ins and outs of uh, what's available right now, please check out the rest of our content, like, subscribe to the page. Uh, you can also go to thenewlydeads.com to find out all the stuff that we have available, including um, events that we're going to be at, uh, all of the other content we produce, including our blogs, our podcast, our television show, and our other YouTube content. Uh, you also can reach us at contact at thenewlydeads.com if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, or check us out on our Facebook page, which is always updated very frequently with a lot of content related to... Uh, horror films, spooky stuff, art, etc. Um, we just, we love all of it. And we like to interact with people out there and kind of grow that community. So please head over there um, and uh, give us a like and stay tuned for a lot more information. So um, along with the recent sales that have been going on and things, um, there was some stuff that came out that I picked up through Amazon that I just kind of stuffed into this one video because there was ended up being quite a bit of it uh, unintentionally, just lots of good sales going on right now. Um, the first thing that I picked up, which I have all of these so far, and I'm very excited to eventually, uh, they're going to have everything out so that I will have all that is available. Um, if you are, if you know me, you know that I, I love Doctor Who, uh, even got it tattooed on my arm there, his name. Um, but uh, this is the Peter Davison uh, Doctor Who Complete Season 2 from 1983. Uh, this stars one Peter Davison, who uh, is the fifth Doctor. This is the 20th season of Doctor Who. Uh, it's listed as Doctor Who Season 2 because that's his second season on the show. But by this point, the show had already been on the air for 20 years. Uh, which just does include the Five Doctors 20th Anniversary Special, which um, I'm kind of excited to check out. It also includes some uh, newly restored and remastered added uh, special effects, but they've done that on, on a couple of these. And um, I, of course, am kind of a, a, a traditionalist when it comes to that, so I want to be able to watch both. So as long as there's both on there, I'm cool with, you know, checking out the, the newly added stuff. But um, just always make sure you got both. Because if you just do one and not the other, why? Anyway, that's just my personal thought. Um, this is the season that contained, like I said, the, the Five Doctors, which is a 90-minute special celebrating the 20th anniversary. And um, if you've never seen it, it's a good time. Uh, these sets are all very similar. So if you've seen any of these before, um, there's not a lot to them. The very first one that came out, the, the Tom Baker set, had a little bit more to it. Um, but after that, I think I, budgetary reasons and whatnot, they just kind of really, like, broke it down to just the bare bones. There's a lot of content on here, a lot of special features. It's, a, it's almost too much to get through at times. There's so much, but it's it's so worthwhile. Um, and I'm such a fan that it's these are amazing sets. So if you've not picked them up, uh, you can get them when they come out and they're, they're not uh, super inexpensive at that time. Um, if you wait, they do have sales, but I don't ever want to miss out in case they go out of print. So if you wait, take your chances. Uh, the other Doctor Who that came out uh, is the Celestial Toy Maker. This is from 1966. So this features the Toy Maker, who was uh, just most recently in the, uh, the right before the kickoff of the new series with uh, Shudi Gatwa uh, as the Doctor. Um, Neil Patrick Harris played the titular role of the Toy Maker, who had not been seen since this time. Um, and this particular... Uh, episode, the first three parts of it were lost. Uh, they were just deleted by the BBC, apparently, because uh, back then they didn't think there was any need to save this stuff. You know, you watched it and it was gone. So only the fourth part remained. And what they've done is they've uh, remastered the other sections of the story 
and put them with, they've added animations to it. So you can watch it in both black and white and color, kind of like the Daleks in color that I did a, another little uh, mention of. And uh, this is a first Doctor story, William Hartnell, uh, who also, this also stars Michael Go as the, uh, the uh, toy maker. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name there, which you may recognize him from, uh, he was Alfred in the original Batman series, and he's done a bunch of horror and exploitation films as well as, he's just had a very long and uh, illustrious career. Um, this is uh, about the celestial toy maker who sees the doctor and companions uh, separated when they come up against him. Uh, and when the doctor plays the uh, trilogic game, Stephen and Dodo are forced to play seemingly childish but ultimately dangerous games with the aim of being reunited and getting back to the TARDIS. Which, if you saw the most recent um, special with the toy maker, you saw that the games are very simplistic, but the outcomes are not very good. Um, so this uh, uh, was destroyed in 1970, in the 70s at some point, roughly. And um, I, they've, it's, the timing on this, of course, is apropos. Um, but it's so nice to have this kind of stuff being kind of put back out there. Um, and some people like the animatic stuff, you know, the anim animation being added. Some people don't. Um, I'm just happy to have complete stories coming out that were kind of, there's so many that are lost to time. Um, and so if you're interested, check it out. Kind of stumbled my way through that, but I'm just excited to watch it. Uh, next up, we have Let's Dance from 1950. Um, oh, I forgot to show you the inside. Uh, we have the back here, which includes you know what the special features are. And then on the inside, we've got uh, Disc 1 and Disc 2 that feature the black and white and the color version of the story. All right. Sorry about that. All right. I'm not used to having these open. I usually have them closed. So like I was saying, Let's Dance from 1950. Um, this was directed by Norman Z. McLeod, who did uh, Topper and Topper Takes a Trip. Uh, he also did Horse Feathers and Monkey Business. So some rather big titles from back in the day. And if you're a Marx Brothers fan, which I am, um, you know, you already know Norman McLeod, but uh, this stars Betty Hutton, who was Annie and Annie Get Your Gun. Um, she also had a show for a while called The Buddy Hutton Show. This was kind of a vehicle for her, um, and uh, Fred Astaire was in it, but it was more Betty Hutton's film. Uh, Fred Astaire, you may know if, uh, from Ghost Story, Holiday Inn, Blue Skies, Easter Parade. I, I love Fred Astaire. I've got some of his albums, his CDs, um, several of his films, and I, I'm just, I grew up watching Fred Astaire. And I, I've never really considered myself a, a guy that enjoys, you know, uh, like dance shows or dance movies. But um, Fred Astaire is one of those that I just, it just makes me happy to watch his film. So this is one I've not actually seen before, but the trailer for it sold me immediately. It was a great price from Kino Lorber. Not big on Kino Lorber discs, but I'm, they're kind of growing on me. Um, and as you'll see, there's more to uh, them as far as what I've recently picked up. Uh, the plot of Let's Dance is after the war, Donald Elwood meets his former USO partner, Kitty McNeil, it's a great 50s name, uh, who is now a rich widow with a little child. Uh, she tries to evade her parent, uh, paternal grandmother who wants her to live in a way according to the customs of her dead husband's class. That sounds complicated, but also very simplistic and just a great kind of uh, segue to a lot of dance uh, numbers, musical numbers, etc. So... Um, the trivia for this that I found was that Fred Astaire was borrowed from Metro Golden, Metro Golden Mayor for the film as Paramount had no star dancers under contract. Why not? You're missing the boat, kids. Um, all right. So next up, we've got It, the Terror from Beyond Space from 1958. I love 50s, uh, like horror and sci-fi, especially like the, the Atomic Age monster movies and, and the alien stuff. It just, it's a sweet spot for me, like the old monster movies. Uh, this was directed by Edward L. Kahn, who did The Zombies of Moritau, uh, Creature with the Atom Brain. So if you're familiar with uh, Sam Katzman, you'll know uh, his his work, and uh, Edward worked for, for Sam Katzman. So those are some movies that are also on the shelf. That's why I mentioned them here. Uh, this stars Marshall Thompson, who was in uh, Fiend Without a Face, and just a, like a whole lot of TV. Very well-known actor from the time. Uh, the plot is that the first manned expedition to Mars is invaded by an unknown life form which stows away on the rescue ship. Sounds like the tale as old as time. Um, 
Inside the It costume was actor, stuntman, and frequent guerrilla performer Ray Crash Corrigan. Uh, this would be Corrigan's final film, uh, ending a film career of over 20 years, which uh, I believe he was the ape in the Boris Karloff. Was it the Boris Karloff? I'll have to put that up here. But I believe he did play uh, the, the titular ape in the ape movie. Um, Kino Lorber, uh, the last one I didn't have a slip cover for. This one I do. Um, their discs are usually, you know, pretty pretty bare bones as far as kind of what's there. Uh, a lot of times there's not even artwork inside, but this is one that is uh, kind of the exception, which has uh, the alternate uh, cover art, which I don't typically switch out the cover arts. I, I Whatever one is on the front is the one I, t I usually leave. I don't think I've ever actually like flipped one. Fun fact about me. Um, then we have uh, Silent Night from 2023. Uh, this is from director John Woo, who did The Killer, uh, Better Tomorrow, Hard Boiled, which is one of my all-time favorite action films. Uh, stars Joel Kinnaman, who uh, was in the RoboCop remake from 2014. He was in Altered Carbon for the first season. He was in Suicide Squad. Uh, he's been around for a while. He's a, a pretty well-known and very versatile actor. He's, he's done a lot of action films. It's kind of been his recent uh, stock and trade, but he's capable of a lot more than that. Um, the plot of this is that a grieving father... Uh, enacts his long-awaited revenge against a ruthless gang on Christmas Eve after uh, they've, I believe, killed his wife and son, or uh, son and the son's mother, I forget exactly the, the uh, that plot beat, but uh, during the course of that, he loses his voice, so there's very little dialogue in this film. Um, there's, I mean, you can probably count the amount of times that anything is spoken uh, on one or two hands. I'm not sure. I've not actually seen it yet. That's just what I've read. I'm a huge John Woo fan, and so um, this was really inexpensive right now. You can get it for under 10 bucks, and it's it's almost brand new as far as, like, it, like it just was in the theater around Christmas time this last year. Um, as with most films, you know, you've got the digital copy, you've got the Blu-ray and the DVD. I'll hold on to the digital copy code there just in case I want to give it away to somebody or uh, uh, in case I need it, which I usually don't, so maybe we'll pop it up somewhere for someone else to enjoy. Um, the fictional police precinct in the film is called Las Palomas, which is Spanish for the doves, uh, which if you know John Woo films, he frequently has shots of doves flying uh, in his films. It's just a trademark of his. Uh, and finally, again, speaking of, of uh, monster movies from the 50s, we've got This Island Earth from 1955. I've been eyeballing this movie for years. Uh, finally got to a price point where I was just like, I can't not get it. Uh, this was directed by Joseph F. M. Newman, who did lots of TVs and movies I'm not familiar with, but I will be, because anytime I do these kind of things, I start to do a deep dive. Uh, it stars Russell Johnson, who you may recognize from Gilligan's Island. He was the professor. Um, the story is on this one, is that uh, aliens come to Earth seeking scientists to help them uh, in their war. So they come to uh, Earth saying, hey, we need help because we're, we're having trouble with this war that's going on. Uh, this film features the very iconic uh, Metalu Metaluna Mutant, um, which if you are familiar with 1950s um, science fiction movies at all, you will be very familiar with the Metaluna Mutant. I'll put a picture of them up right here for, so you can see them, just in case, because it's kind of hard to see on the, the uh, cover art here. Uh, I've drawn him several times. Uh, I'm a fan of the design. When I was a kid, I had a little eraser that um, I think was through a fast food restaurant. I believe they had it as like a giveaway. And that thing, I played with that thing like it was a regular toy. And it was just like a little, like a little gummy eraser type thing. I don't know. I don't think it was a eraser. I think it was just kind of a gummy thing. Uh, not food, but rubbery. It was just super cool. And they don't do that kind of thing too much anymore. Um, but it was a personal favorite thing of mine when I was growing up. Uh, there were several of them, actually. Uh, in a magazine article. Oh, my goodness. Jack is going nuts. That's my fish over there. Um, the special effects department admitted that the mutant costume originally had legs that matched the upper body. Uh, they had so much trouble ma making the legs uh, look and work properly that they were forced by the studio um, to have the mutant wear a pair of trousers. And uh, if you see in the, the movie posters, you'll notice that the, the legs are different than they actually appear in the film. Uh, so that's the reason why. All right, so that is it for that haul. Uh, and there is so much more to come. I don't know what I was thinking. I must have been drunk. I don't drink, so I can't use that excuse. Um, but thank you all for watching. And uh, just remember that tomorrow is not guaranteed, so don't forget to unbox your heart.
We'll see you next time. Halloween, the festival of Sawa. Happy Halloween.